The Unshackled Waves, episode 137. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. Now you'll probably have noticed we are only doing one show this week. This is because we are installing a new Unshackled studio, which we'll be debuting this week. The transition has meant there is quite a bit of new technology to get used to, so it has made sitting down to record a show difficult for the time being. This is our last show with the old set, so you'll see our changes next episode. It was a week of many scandals. First was the that Facebook data had been used in political campaigns without the express permission of Facebook users. The Victorian Labor government was revealed to have rorted staffing allowances to win the 2014 state election and tried to cover it up. The union movement has also launched a campaign attacking what is termed the gig economy and ABC comedy has sunk to a new low to attack conservatives. Also breaking today is the Australian cricket team was busted cheating in the latest test in South Africa by ball tampering. Speaking of South Africa, in Brisbane today there was a rally calling on the Australian government to accept white South African farmers as refugees, which is an important stand. But on with the weekly review, and I'm joined by Chief Correspondent of the Unshackled, Steel Archer. This is the Unshackled Waves Review Show. Steel, welcome back to the show. Hi, Tim. Thanks for having me back on the show. Uh, well, it's been quite a, as I mentioned in my introduction, a week of uh, scandal. Probably the, the biggest uh, international one is the so-called uh, Facebook uh, data breach. Now, what uh, that means is there was this firm called uh, Cambridge uh, Analytical, which uh, collected data from uh, Facebook users through quizzes and, and things like that. And it was eventually used by the Trump campaign, not in the general election, but during the uh, Republican uh, primaries. And the issue seems to be that these Facebook users didn't consent to their data being used in this way because Obama used uh, Facebook information in a similar way in 2012, uh, but he, w- he was using like, the official Obama campaign app on Facebook to get access to this uh, information. And of course, you know, that was an invasion of privacy privacy or trying to manipulate voters that was seen as, you know, rev- revolutionary, uh, a campaign uh, masterstroke. So a lot of this is uh, seen as a scandal because it was used by uh, conservatives. To me, it's, uh, I, I always assume Facebook was using uh, all my information to, uh, you know, give to, to other people. So I don't get why this is such a big scandal. Yeah, so that's really interesting. Uh, you know, Obama came in in 2008. Uh, he, he, he raced ahead of John McCain in the whole social media landscape uh, and took that election in 2012. Uh, Mitt Romney did a little, little better on the whole social media side, and, and, uh, and, and Obama obviously used the, uh, the, uh, social, uh, the social media third-party apps and things like this to his advantage. Now, when we get to this Cambridge Analytica debate, it was third-party apps, about 200,000 of these, these, uh, these users of these third-party apps who uh, have been directly impacted. And then the broader impact seems to be spanning out to what the media is saying is about 50 million, somewhere around there. Considering you know, uh, Facebook has a user base anywhere between 1 and 2 billion people, uh, the, 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 the estimates go up and down because fake, fake accounts are... Uh, it's not it's not a terribly huge breach. Now the, the 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 issue that's being hyped up by the media about this is the fact it was used by the Trump campaign, and that's the issue. That's what people don't like um, because the, you know if you see some of the Channel Four, I think in the, the in the UK, some of the Channel Four under undercover investigative reporting about this issue. Um, you know the Cambridge Analytica uh, you know, consultants and and uh, and firm uh, firm uh, directors and things like that. They were using undercover, you know, Ukrainian girls and all sorts, sorts of uh, crazy things in order to attain this data and, and move this around. So there's a lot of you know it, 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 it's reminiscent of this Russian spy scandal. There's a lot of uh, there's data is the new gold. Data is the new uh, the new currency. It's the new oil. 
and people will do a lot to get into get in on this. But the fact that it has Trump's name on it is the reason it's blowing up. Now that's giving Mark Zuckerberg a headache. Um, he's kind of had to come out and apologize. Uh, to the international community on, on this behalf. And they'll be running into three main problems and issues and areas. As one is fake news, obviously. Uh, fake news is, 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 a, is a hard one to get around on, on Facebook. The other one is a free speech. You know, the, we've had the uh, pug incident now in, in Ireland uh, where the, the states are starting to crack down on free speech. And this is an issue for Facebook as well. And then the third one is, you know, data seeping out into, into all of these uh, analytic companies all across the world. Yeah, it's it's interesting that uh, Mark Zuckerberg felt the need to you know give an interview to uh, CNN of all people, uh, saying that yeah Facebook was going to tighten access to data to uh, developers and was open to regulation. Now alarm bells go off when I hear him say something like that because we all know that you know Facebook it's only too eager to censor you know conservative and right leaning people and it almost seems like it's given him an excuse to uh, uh, try uh, crack down on these people uh even further and here at the unshackled i mean we you know try to you know utilize uh facebook data to increase our reach and you know we could be directly you know affected by this because you know the media spin is you know how dare you know conservatives you know use this uh you know data to promote their causes yeah so so i think i think the way to address the issue is they have to give the user agreements uh, they have to simplify user agreements give them more uh, backstops and put more responsibility and onus on users i think this is the way to curtail these things if people uh, you know don't make them five page reports on you know where your data is going or whatever or if, if you're using it off make it simple make it easy to read and make it user friendly so that people don't have an excuse when their data does run away, or you know, it, 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 like within internal within internal uh, frameworks, um, because you know, if if you own a social media website or any sort of website, uh, as you know, um, data is absolutely essential to the the running of the internal uh, framework of that website and and where your customers are and who they are and all that. So Facebook, YouTube, Google, and all this are just on a massive scale. So I think the onus personally has to be put somewhat back. On Facebook and and these other companies, in terms of simplifying user agreements, but at the same time, I also think that you know they should take they should take uh, some responsibility in uh, in ensuring that there that there are more backstops. Um, there's been a proposal about a three month proposal where, if you do have your uh, you know Facebook account linked up to some sort of third party app, um, that after three months of inactivity, it'll be automatically shut down. For example, now these these are sort of things that are coming in uh, to to arrest the giant issue of data leak. Um, I think I think it could be addressed. I think it should be addressed, and I think it's something that has to be taken very seriously. And the argument seems to be from, you know, people who are really grilling Facebook, it's, you know, oh, Trump, you know, used Facebook to manipulate the election result. They seem to be saying that, you know, voters are so, you know, stupid that, uh, you know, they'll, you know, fall for, you know, whatever th thing on Facebook. And, you know, we need laws to stop people, you know, being, you know, manipulated as a, you know, threat to, you know, our democracy when it's... Uh, you know, using Facebook to, you know, get people to vote for you, that's just another extension on election advertising, which has been going on for, you know, a hundred years. I mean, you know, obviously it's moved into the, you know, digital sphere. Why all of a sudden is like, oh no, you know, uh, yeah, they're basically saying, oh, these, you know, idiots, oh, you know, they just, you know, fall for, you know, this ad on Facebook. And that's why super intelligent Hillary didn't win. Yeah, well, yeah, I was, I was going to say, when are we going to bring up the Hillary Clinton question on this? You can see her little meddling hands in the background of this. First it was Russia, now it's data. Uh, you know, uh, the Russian bots have seemed to have gone away. Uh, what happened to all the Russian bots? They've seemed to disappear into the background, and now it's, now it's oh, uh, you know, data analytics, because those little people out there in Kansas, those little people out there in Iowa, they can't make up their own mind about a campaign and, uh, you know, and, 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 infer what they want on their own, on campaign speeches. So yeah, no, you, this is this is this is a big elitist uh, mentality where they're looking down on the little person saying, well, you can't make up your own mind. Obviously, obviously your mind has been impacted by such things as Cambridge Analytica or, or, or a unicorn uh, company. 
Probably the biggest political scandal in Australia this week concerns the uh, Victorian Labor uh, government of Daniel Andrews after an ombudsman report uh, found that uh, during the 2014 state election they diverted uh, electorate uh, staff from Labor MPs' office and sent them to work on the Labor campaign as part of the Red Shirt Army. Now, 21 MPs used this scheme, uh, 14 who are presently serving. It uh, cost the taxpayer uh, 380000 And uh, probably what's even worse is that the Andrews government spent $1 million in uh, legal fees to stop the Oppensman uh, investigating uh, this. Now, Premier Danley Andrews claimed he had no knowledge of this scheme and the Labor Party's paid back the 380000 no word yet on the, the $1 million, uh, spent. Uh, so he's basically said, oh, because we've paid it back, it's uh, it, it's all okay and, oh, you know, it had nothing to, to do with me. And uh, other MPs have uh, now contradicted him because he's basically thrown them under the bus saying, well, it was, you know, these dirty MPs and, you know, I'm, you know, uh, squ squeaky clean. And he's also hoping that this scandal will, you know, blow over, that it will just be news for a week and, and then we'll all forget about it. But it's, you know, pretty, you know, outrageous that, you know, they tried to, to basically rot the, the taxpayer like this. And there is, I, I know that, um, no, uh, electorate officers, they, they are involved with their, uh, M, uh, their boss's re-election campaign. I've been, I've been handing out, you know, how to vote cards and the, the, the people who are handing out for the major parties, a lot of them often work for the, the MP who's, uh, contesting the seat. So, uh, this is, uh, this, you know, using electorate start to campaign happens, you know, often, but because, you know, they were supposed to work in one office and then were transferred to another office, which that MP was not entitled to, that's, that's why this is a scandal. Yeah, absolutely. This is, this is a stolen election. Uh, the, the Liberal Party should be up in arms. Not only should the Liberal Party be up in arms, but there should be mass resignations of everybody who is involved, Daniel, Daniel Andrews included. Uh, I, think, I think this is one of our biggest states. This is one of our most popular states. Uh, this is, you know, one of our, our richest states. This is one of our biggest cities. Um, this is a stolen election. We can't go back in time and, and change what, what the damage that has been done. And just because they've repaid the, uh, the, the fine, or uh, the, 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 the rot, the, the, the corruption, they repaid their corruption, um, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't affect in anything. It doesn't impact anything. It doesn't say anything. All it is is trying to paper over the, uh, the huge issue that, 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 that is, uh, you know, stamping on the liberties of, of, of democracy, the stamping on democracy. If you're a minor party, get very cranky about this because they're stealing uh, they're stealing, uh, you know, your thunder. You know, you're out there legitimately trying hard to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, appropriate funds and, and campaign hard and, and and go against these big guys, and they're just stealing straight out of the taxpayers' coffers, straight out of the co coffers of hardworking Australians, and yet, you know, and 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 not letting anybody else get ahead. Uh, there needs to be mass resignations, absolutely, of all these people involved. Uh, not only do they need to pay back to the dollar the sum amount, but they have to pay back the opportunity cost of that money as well. And the other thing is like that, you know, the, the, there should be jail time essentially for this because the the the, the system is now fundamentally broken in, in some respects. The fact that we don't know if they are actually the elected party they're supposed to be. We don't know. This is uh, this is now undefined. This uh, this is this is something that should go to the high court again. Uh, our po politicians who you know break the rules and you know rot taxpayers' money, they don't go to jail. They're just you know asked to you know repay the the money back. Or most of the time, it's you know within the the guidelines. Whenever it's uh, travel and that, where you know if you did this in the the private uh, sector, you know stealing from your employer, you know you'd be charged with you know embezzlement and you know po uh, possibly uh, jail time. But of course, it's always a you know another rule for the the politicians and you know. Daniel Andrews, he said, he said he's taking no action against any MPs 
or anybody. The the only solace that uh, Victorian people can take from this is that this has landed uh, just before a state election, which is during November 2018. Uh, so obviously uh, Labor will be hoping the voters will have short memories. And some have arrogantly told the paper, the newspapers that, oh, voters will forget about it. They'll still, you know, vote for us. So, you know, they're, they're clearly just, you know, uh, hoping that you know, oh, you know, we can, we can ride this out, but that's not turning out to be the case. There's mass anger. Uh, Daniel Andrews was heckled at a uh, media conference uh, the other day with uh, expletives. I mean, you know, people are pretty angry about this. And so they should be. So they should be. They're stealing hardworking, uh, you know, mum and dad, mum and pop shops, taxpayers' funds in order to fund their own political campaigns. This is absolutely atrocious. This isn't democratic. This is a this is a tyrannical enterprise, and the fact that nobody is going to jail, the fact that nobody is being you know, being fired, no, no, the fact that the fact that they think they can uh, paper over this and run through to the next election and be a lot and, and elected in a landslide, shows the absolute ignorance and the absolute elitism of this party and of this government. So you know, Melbourne uh, people, people down there in Victoria, you've got to rise up and you've got to not forget about this sort of. This is sort of elitism that's going on. Oh, well, the last uh, poll had uh, Daniel Andrews government ahead, 52-48. It'll be interesting uh, what, what the next poll says. But uh, his government has survived you know, multiple uh, scandals. There was, of course, the, the $1 billion uh, spent to not build the, the East-West link. Uh, there was a, a, a minister who was uh, driving his uh, dogs around in chauffeured cars. And then there was the speaker and deputy speaker who were uh, found to be claiming... Uh, uh, living away from home allowances when they were uh, metropolitan MPs. So, you know, they're probably, you know, so arrogant that they think, well, we'll survive these and we're still ahead in the polls. You know, we can, you know, survive this. And uh, it's the, you know, Daniel Andrews and the Labour Party, they, you know, they're big on, you know, virtue signaling, you know, saying where, um, you, know, uh, you know, we care about, you know, the poor and the downtrodden, you know, we don't like bullying. That's why we've got this, you know, safe schools uh, program. But there's actually, you know, quite you know, a lot of, you know, hostility going behind the scenes. There was a, an MP who was attacked with a button knife by uh, one of the, the factional uh, warlords. And was, so it's not, not, all's, not all's well. And there, it sounds like there's a real, you know, toxic, you know, culture and, you know, contempt for people within that government. Yeah, and absolutely, and 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 meanwhile, you know, they're letting apex gangs run uh, run wild. They're letting uh, people get run over in the streets in the middle of their city, and uh, you know, social chaos and disorder is is going up all around them. It feels like it feels like a a, a flashback to you know the the era of let them eat cake. You know, this sort of this sort of notion that that uh, that they they're allowed to do whatever they want simply because they are who they are, and you know. The, the, if the people of Victoria want to liberate themselves from this sort of bad politics, from these sort of scandals, from these sort of, you know, chauffeur you know, puppy dogs and things like this, while they're while they're people, you know, uh, rummage around for scraps of food on the street, well, then they need to get rid of this government and put in a proper government, get rid of this one, and put in someone who will restore law and order. And I'm not sure who that is. I'm not sure if that's the Liberal Party or if that's somebody else. But this part, this government is going to go. Uh, well, uh, given all these scandals and the liberal oppositions, uh, you know, still behind, uh, they're, they're not putting forward a you know good alternative. I mean, it's it, uh, they're very uh, you know meek the the, the liberal uh, opposition. You would hope that you know, given that this you know scandal has been given to them on a platter, they'll begin to you know hammer the the government on you know its its integrity and, and you know its. Uh, transparency uh, uh, in in government i mean you know if you can't win a state election after this then you really need to have a good hard look at yourself well you know liberal the liberal party is starting to change the sales across the country first tasmania then south australia now victoria question mark is this scandal a prelude to something bigger i'm not sure only the victorian people Paul can can uh, announce that if, through the polls, but you know if 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 this scandal is what it helps uh, you know helps helps change you know puts the uh, the winds of change, 
then, then uh, I hope so, because Victoria needs a change, needs a change now. The Australian Council of Trade Unions under its new secretary, Sally uh, McManus, has launched its biggest advertising campaign uh, since work choices, uh, attacking the uh, growth of casual worker, labour hire and independent contractors, uh, campaigning to uh, get uh, their slogan is change the rules to get better e employment uh, conditions that uh, normal uh, full time and part time employees are in entitled to. They've also got a, you know, website they're really planning to go hard at this at the uh, next election and it's interesting this happens at the same time as the federal government is trying to uh, get through uh, company tax cuts will it, which will eventually see the the corporate tax rate reduced to 25% uh, in in 10 years time now i really believe that you know the the ACTU is you know on to you know a, a winner with this because you know the the view of you know big business and the corporations is you know it's they're not viewed well by you know as the the Australian people and uh, they you know they they're very much you know want care about the vulnerable worker now you know obviously I'm a free market person and I certainly believe in a you know deregulated you know labor market but I've got to call it you know how I see it I mean the ACTU campaign it's effective it you know really you know is emotive if you see the ads you know it's a, a working mum you know struggling with the bills and you know I'll look at you know all these uh, large salaries that you know these CEOs are, are getting and you know big business it's it's basically non-existent I mean, what did they do to campaign for these company tax cuts? You know, write a letter of all the CEOs saying, please give us this tax cut. I mean, how pathetic. I mean, you know, no wonder you're losing. I mean, uh, that's just, you know, pathetic. I mean, Sally McManus is going to walk all over you. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, the, 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 this whole company tax cut, let's just talk about this for a second. This is, this is an interesting idea because Labor opposes it and they use this tagline that we've heard often, often enough about the $65 billion tax cut. Now all it's doing is bringing you know, uh, the Australian tax regime to tax law into, into line with international uh, states to make it more competitive because if we don't cut our taxes then we won't have any businesses left in Australia. Um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the issue of part-time work versus uh, full-time work and the, the conditions that there are is off, uh, there is a reason that there's part-time work and there's full-time work. There's a reason that there's different conditions around those, uh, around those areas. Full-time work is a different set of standards, a different set of rules, a different set of conditions to part-time work. And I don't see why you would try and merge the two together um, and, and, and force more costs on businesses when, uh, you know, when Australia already has a ridiculously high minimum wage. Um, you, you're going to reduce the labour pool. You're going to uh, reduce the number of jobs. Uh, so I, I don't quite understand the notion. Well, part of the motivation for the unions in launching this campaign is because, you know, they want to, you know, muscle into uh, these types of employment and so they can, you know, uh, do, you know, collective bargaining agreements for, you know, these industries and, you know, also get access to new members because unions are still fighting for, you know, relevance. Their, you know, memberships are declining. So, you know, if they can get access to these, you know, casuals, labour high independent contractors, that's a whole, you know, new pot of, you know, money and influence uh, they can get. Yeah, yeah, that 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 would make sense. I think the um, I think that uh, yeah, the union the unions have definitely been on 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 the decline. Uh, they've they definitely have been losing their influence over over time. Um, they're still scrambling with the government at the federal level. I mean, uh, the CMFEU uh, issue is probably the most potent uh, of that. But um, yeah, no, I, I think that, you know, I think that we should probably keep the unions out of this, of this, of this pool of workers because if they do impact, impact this, uh, it's going to take options away from workers where they might see and think it's a good idea because the unions are now standing up for you, but what, what will happen is you just won't have a job. Um, it's just happened over and over and over again with the unions. So, uh, I hope I hope that they, you know, they, that these campaigns, the struggling mother, you know, in the adverts, uh, you know, call to reason, and and you know, you know, we see some some action 
uh, from the employment side. Yeah, I mean, what the, you know, the Business Council of Australia need to do and all these, you know, other, you know, business groups is, you know, get out there and, you know, fight hard. I mean, it's not going to just be handed to you on a platter, you know, like tax cuts and, uh, you know, industrial relations, you know, reform. You know, if, you know, if you didn't spend, you know, so much of your time, you know, like campaigning on, you know, feel good issues like, you know, same sex marriage and indigenous recognition, you know, maybe, you know, you, you would actually, you know, improve uh you know the conditions to create you know more jobs and you know expand your operations yeah i mean there's there's a lot of places where we could talk about you know waste uh, waste uh the plebiscite was a waste uh you know there's been a lot of waste uh coming from the government and and missed opportunities another another area of waste for government would be these new stadiums i i personally think uh, I, th I think we ha could find a lot better investment opportunities than building new stadiums up there in New South Wales. Um, I leave that open to the forum, though. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, I mean, I want to see, I want to see employment opportunities for Australians. I want to see as many Australians as we can, uh, you know, out there working, and, and I think they deserve the best shot that we have. Um, but I don't, I don't believe that, you know. Merging the the line of employ uh, full time and and part time is is necessarily the way to do it. Well, they've got uh, companies like uh, Uber and all these new uh, you know delivery uh, companies, which uh, is referred to as the the gig economy in their sites. Now, uh, often sometimes these companies have been referred to as permanent unemployment uh, cures because you can basically sign up to them and begin you know driving and delivering uh, just like that. But of course, you know once it becomes you know unionized, and we know that you know when. The, the price of labor, you know, goes above its market price, then you know, unemployment, you know, happens. And so, you know, we could have, well, you know, it would be a, a permanent uh, unemployment cure if, of course, you know, it wasn't, you know, so attractive to, you know, take new start uh, every, every fortnight. But, you know, we'd begin to, you know, shut people out of potential work again. Well, I was reading a report that was saying, for example, with Uber drivers, that already Uber drivers are basically earning minimum wage or below if you take into account of fuel and, and insurance and, and government regulations already and, and, and all of the other things that uh, you add on top of that, the Uber fees and such, that they're basically earning either just on minimum wage or, or below. Um, you know, Uber likes to put out these little campaigns, uh, so does Lyft, uh, you know, that they're going to be bankrupt in the next 10 years. Uh, you know, these, to scare their drivers into into accepting low wages, um, but um, look, I, I don't think that these these quote unquote what you hate, what you said gig economies are necessarily the uh, the, due, the, the the end all of of employment fixes. I think they're just another tool, just another mechanism in the labour market. All that all that uh, the Uber does, for example, is just replace taxis. I mean, it's no. There's no there's no big big deal there, and look at look at how look at what happened to the taxi industry once once uh, once the unions got involved with that they they completely ripped off commuters uh, absolutely, and then they they did it to the point where they had to get bought out by uh, you know uh, foreign Indian companies and things like this because it was simply not enough money. So I I think that you know there, there's a lot of room for growth in 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 those in those sectors in those areas in the economy. I think. Uh, uh, globally, there there has to be new ideas. I know Deliveroo and such like this uh, could come in, but I think more engulf involvement by um, by unions is just going to hit harder on the on these margin on these margin costs. And the big companies, the the company side, will not accept lower profits uh, than they than they used to, and they'll shove that back on their workers. So. Um, you know, it's just going round and round circle. So you might as well leave it, uh, leave them out of it. To be honest. Well, I I actually agree with the slogan "Change the rules," but I want you know the employment rules to be changed and you know deregulated to allow more you know flexible employment and uh, you know workplace arrangements, and that would you know and make sure that you know. Uh, employers aren't being, you know, disadvantaged by having, you know, traditional, you know, full-time, part-time employees and are not, you know, undercut by, you know, these these new businesses. I mean, you know, make it a level playing field by introducing less regulation. 
I'm all for less regulation. I mean, I'm all for less regulation in, in the employment field. Uh, I think that more regulation just uh, cuts profits on the other, on the one end, and it cuts employment opportunities and it cuts wages. So you get less wages for employ employers uh, and, and, uh, for employees at the at the end of the day, um, and le less taxes as well uh, because there's more going into the fees. Uh, you know, at the at the at the other end. So. Look, I'm I'm all I'm all for deregulation in that in that in that market in that space. Um, I think it would be better for workers and better for employees. Now, the ABC's alleged uh, comedy channel has uh, got itself into controversy this week. Its flagship uh, program is a, a news uh, satire program called Tonightly with uh, Tom Ballard. And they uh, recently aired a, a segment uh, on the, the Batman by-election. And uh, they, they were talking about the, the push by the left to uh, rename it uh, because it's named after John Batman, who was the founder of uh, Melbourne. Now, even though he uh, negotiated a treaty with uh, the local indigenous people to acquire the city of Melbourne, the modern left, you know, believed that oh, he uh, ripped them off and it wasn't a fair trade. I love how these, you know, white people, like 200 years later, think they know better than, you know, the indigenous people in, uh, you know, uh, during that time. Uh, they, they proposed uh, crassly renaming the electorate uh, Batman is a cunt. Uh, which is probably the, the dirtiest word you can say on television. And they redid all the campaign posters of the, the, the candidates to say, you know, Batman is a cunt. Now, the Australian Conservatives uh, candidate, uh, Kevin Bailey, he didn't have the word uh, Batman on his, uh, on his poster. And so uh, they, uh, what, what they did tonightly is they just had, you know, Kevin Bailey, you know, is a cunt, which was basically, uh, you know, that, uh, all the audience thought that was, you know, really, uh, hilarious, but uh, uh, it's basically, you know, uh, they just wanted to abuse a conservative there, and you know, the the issue for me is, you know, not that, you know there was you know filthy you know language use, the fact that you know it wasn't you know funny. How is like abuse, you know, edgy uh, comedy, and uh, and it's all too often that uh, you know. And this is the problem with, you know, modern, you know, comedy. It's not, it's not funny anymore. It's preachy stuff. And, you know, if they, if they don't like, you know, conservative, it's just, you know, saying, uh, you know, uh, how, how much they don't like them and, you know, resorting to abuse. It's, it's pathetic. Well, what's interesting with this whole, this whole, uh, issue is that why are they copying the United States style? I mean, the United States has all these comedy, these tonight comedy shows and things, and, and Australia thinks, well, now we have to get on the bandwagon. I've seen that the BBC has also brought in comedy channels and comedy shows. It's like the, the centre, the, 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 uh, the, the, the current uh, establishment is, is using its final folly, its final, its final go, and that, that, that is comedy. And you know the 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 word used, the absolute word, which I, I won't I won't pronounce here because someone will use it a remix or something. It made me look bad in the future. But um, you know, the absolutely, it's 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 the crassness and the disgustingness of it. Um, why why would the left stoop to such levels? It just reveals who they are and they're disgusting. Uh, you know, unhuman people. Right, to be to be to be honest, and the fact that your your Taxpayer money, your, your tax money is going towards a comedy show, a state-sponsored comedy show that is attacking conservatives, attacking liberals on this issue, uh, inf offending Indigenous people, offending history, offending uh, the, one of the founding fathers of, uh, of of Victoria and Melbourne, is uh, is beyond belief. It's not beyond disbelief uh, that this 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 country is 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 heading in a direction that is would be unfathomable even five years ago. Um, they use the word comedy to mask the reality that these people are just offensive. They're just uh, they're just irrelevant to the whole you know the specter of common decency that that should be uh, you know what what a state broadcaster should be you know uh, you know presenting to the public. And Corey Bernardi. Uh 
the leader of Australian Conservatives, he demanded an apology from the ABC and Communications Minister uh, Mitch Fifield is wanting the ABC to investigate how this uh, skit made it to air. Now, uh, the director of uh, entertainment at the ABC offered uh, a, an apology to, you know, Kevin Bailey if, you know, any offence was, you know, intended, you know, we apologise, one of those, you know, pathetic, uh, you know, apologies like that. They're, they're, nothing's going to happen at the, the ABC. I mean, they've done this um you know stuff before in like 2013 they called conservative uh columnist uh chris kenny a dog fucker and had him uh you know doc that photoshop photo of him uh, having sex with uh, the dog now chris kenny had to sue them to to get some sort of apology out of them so you know like uh, Mitch Firefield, you know, he can't, he, he can't do anything. And of course, the, uh, you know, the group thing of the ABC are, are going uh, are gonna to be thinking, oh, you know, this was, you know, really edgy of us. We've rolled up, you know, conservatives. And if you, you know, try to censor us, that's, you know, taking away our free speech, which you were right before. It's a, you know, taxpayer, you know, funded, you know, broadcaster. Like, you know, if, for example, if, you know, a private, you know, comedy channel, you know, wanted to, to air that, like, I'd still think it was, you know, disgusting and unfunny, but, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd just not watch it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the, the private world, you know, you take your bets, you hedge your bets on what your consumers want to ingest. If they want to see that stuff, they will see it. If they don't, you lose money and the market will punish you. That's how that works. For a state-sponsored broadcaster, um, a, getting in on comedy is kind of a bad thing because then you become, then you start to show and direct your biases through that. And again, they're just copying the United States strategy on that. But uh, the second is, you know, that they're, they're, I mean, they're supposed to be unbiased towards everyone. They're supposed to be a, they're supposed to be a, a neutral entity. Um, you know, second is, is that why, uh, you know, why, why the crassness? Why the crudeness? I mean, Daniel Andrews and, uh, you know, uh, why is there nothing against this, this guy? Why was it against, you know, why was the, why was the issue against Batman? How many, uh, you know, Daniel Andrews skits was there uh, on this ABC comedy thing? I would, I would guess zero. I would guess nothing. I, I would guess nothing against the Greens. I would get, you know, the, the last time you had the, a semi-balanced approach to comedy on the ABC was probably the chases. Uh, you know, that was, that was you know, they, they at least had a go at everybody and they tried to. Tony Abbott was attacked viciously uh, by everybody across the political spectrum for trying to, you know, even cut marginally the ABC, um, you know, it went, when, when, when he was around as, as prime minister. And he, he barely made an impact on that, on that thing. Uh, it's it's a it's over funded over a billion dollars. They they have a super super infrastructure that that and and very little content, um, and they're they're very inefficient as a as a as a as a as a bureaucracy. They have thousands and thousands of employees that pump out or virtually nothing, and then what they do pump out is this. So I don't understand. Uh, I don't understand it. I don't think it's. I don't think it's right. And I think you know. Uh, I think that we should uh, we should have a very serious talk about this as a as a national conversation to get rid of this sort of vile currency that's floating around. It's not so much the the word that you know uh, like I, I I'm not offended you know by the word like I don't I don't you know feel comfortable that it should be certain words that you know are banned from uh, TV. It's just, uh, and that can be used as. You know, actually, you know, a term of affection. I don't believe that, uh, you know, when the when it's used, it's like m always, you know, mis misogynistic. But the issue is that it was used, you know, in an abusive way. And the fact that, you know, it wasn't, you know, funny at all. I mean, uh, I think that uh, another issue is the the consumer fraud of like it being sold as, you know, a comedy channel. Yeah. No, I understand, and I I, I just think that words like that. You know, like because the the, the reason this upset is so upsetting is because on one hand they are very pro censorship. They will attack conservatives. They will attack uh, very people on the far right, on the far left. They will attack them, attack them, attack them, and, and try and censor the hell out of them. And then they won't censor their own content or and or brand it as comedy when when they do it. So I'm just I'm just at a loss of the double standard that's going on here. I don't understand the uh, standards and, and, and broadcasting principles principles that they're that they're operating under especially when when everybody else is held to a very high standard 
Uh, can you imagine how outraged they'd be if, you know, like, uh, you know, we use the term, you know, faggot in an abusive way? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, this, yeah, you can't say anything against uh, homosexuals, especially, uh, you know, in, in this day and age, you can't say anything, you know, there's no, there's no edgy content. Imagine, if, like, for example, imagine if I went and started up a comedy bar, a comedy bar, and, you know, you could buy Himmler there or something, or you could buy Hitler, like a drink or something. They would be over that like, uh, like, like flies to a, uh, you know, flies to a light bulb. But you know they will uh, broadcast this without anything. Uh, they you know without remorse. We won't hold our breath for uh, the ABC to uh, ch uh, do anything about this. But uh, I think the the only solution is you know basically you know privatize, uh, defund it. But it will take a very brave government to to have that happen. Well, it wouldn't ha wouldn't happen under a uh, under Malcolm Turnbull. I'll let you know, let you know now. Malcolm Turnbull does not have the. Uh, I mean, essentially, I, I personally, I'm in a little. I'm in support for a national broadcast, or I think that the national broadcaster does fill uh, gaps in the market that simply won't be replaced by private companies. There are certain divisions and certain topics and certain things that national broadcasters can do, say, uh, etc. That, that private companies just won't. Um, so I don't think we should. I don't think there is a I don't think there is a total need for a hundred percent privatization on my side of the fence. Uh, but I do think that you know if we cut them funding to zero for now to teach them a lesson of where they should be going, uh, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't uh, be complaining at all. <laughs> yeah, and they certainly wouldn't find that uh, funny then. Uh... But uh, I'd like to thank you, Steele, for uh, uh, discussing the week's uh, events with me. We actually didn't get to, to cover all of it because, you know, breaking stories today, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, another scandal has been the Australian cricket team disgracefully trying to cheat by ball tampering. And also there's the uh, uh, pro or protest or rally in uh, Brisbane for the Australian government to accept uh, persecuted white uh, South African uh, farmers, which I believe will be getting some... Uh, footage of yeah we've got we've got the unshackled has uh, people on the ground in that area and uh, we should be getting exclusive photos and maybe some videos as well so if you're if you're a fan of the unshackled get get ready to see some of that sort of stuff uh we're very excited about that all right everybody that's the show for today as i said in my introduction stay tuned for those changes this week it will certainly be worth the wait also don't forget if you want to take the unshackled even further and score some awesome rewards please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash the unshackled don't forget we have our online store upright market where you can purchase unshackled merchandise and other great gear for right thinking people thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.